Good day, Mr. Harstam. I'd like to submit a complaint about Terran. Their comeback potential is just too high. First, they have buildings that can fly, so it's just impossible to truly kill a base. Second, and that's what is imbalanced, is they can stack their macro mechanic to gain benefit from it immediately. For instance, if a Zerg messed up their inject, they cannot inject 5 times at once and get 20 larva. If Protoss was not chrono boosting for 5 minutes, they cannot chrono boost 5 times to reduce probe build time to 3 seconds. But if a Terran does not macro properly, they can drop 5 mules simultaneously and get 1300 resources at once. How is that fair? Please watch the attached replay. <laughs> Thanks for the, that note. I was planning on just reading your complaint form and giving you the finger. But now, now I'll watch the replay. <laughs> the Terran was completely dead for the first half of the game. Then we had semi base trade, during which my potato computer lagged for several seconds and all my mutas flied into mines and died. This is the oldest excuse in the world, lag, which resulted in a situation where I had two times more drones and the same amount of bases. But you know what? Mules. He just dropped like five of them and get back into the game. So please tell me, Mr. Harstam, is stacking mules imbalanced or do I not understand something about that game and thus suck? Question mark. Name Darkson, race Zerg. The league is Diamond on North America with 3600 MMR. And the question is simple. Is stacking mules imbalanced or does Darkson suck? All right, here we are in the game then between Marie, our Red Terran player, and Darkson, the man, the myth, the legend, and the one we'll be paying attention to, opening up with a pool first here. I don't completely mind that. I often say at lower levels, one of the greatest things you can do is open up with, not, not a cheesy opener, not an all-in, but an early pressure, as I like to call it. You know, get your four links, get your six links across the map, follow it up with some roaches for all I care. Like your standard link into roach build is just going to get you quite far ahead in most games. Now, of course, it has the downside of always being up in a macro game if you do end up transitioning into a macro game afterwards, which makes you believe that you should always be up that much in a macro game, which tends to not exactly be the case. Anyway, we have Marie here who opens up with a... Yeah, what is this? <laughs> I... CC into Marine, no gas for a Reaper, no gas for a quick factory either. So it must have been a slightly delayed gas or if you got to send his SCVs into gas. A confusing opener to say the least here coming out of Marais. And he's going to struggle a little bit as well against these initial six links because there was no scout here whatsoever. He only has a single Marine. He's not building anything else with his barracks despite I imagine they're first going to be a factory. Yeah, so... Definitely could have had two extra marines here. Most likely, at least. Most likely could have had two extra marines here. Instead, built nothing. And I was going to struggle against this initial move out here with these six links. Do I like the control on that? Also like the split off here on these uh, on these links. Four to the main, two in the natural. Should have targeted down that uh, SCV a little bit faster. It's been quite slow with that. Four is a big SCV pool. This is probably already worth it, honestly. Taking out an SCV here. Probably will get a second one. Might even get this marine as well. Yep, there we go. That second marine is now out. This is all completely fine. Behind this though, there's no macro whatsoever. We saw a, a mineral float of 700 coming out of our Zerg player. And you could say, well, Harstam, the Terran also was floating a bunch of money. That's true. But he couldn't really spend the money because A, he couldn't start his orbital yet. That's 150 minerals. And B, because he had to build more marines. Uh, he cannot produce two Hellions at the same time. So, yes, he floated money, but it's a little bit unfair to compare the situations because the, the Zerg floated money because of incompetence when it came to multitasking, and the Terran also floated money due to incompetence, but a different type of incompetence, not due to the multitasking, but because uh, his build order wasn't completely perfect. I think that is different. At least, in my mind, that is, that is slightly different. One player doesn't have a build order, the other one just doesn't have the speed. But yeah, in the end, both of them floated a bit of money. I guess that is the, a, a fine comparison. Follow-up here is a two-gas roach. This is starting to smell a little bit like an eight to nine roach push. And you kind of have two paths that you can walk here, I would say. So you have the path of the, the nine roach into drones. And then you have the, the nine roach or the eight roach, I guess we're seeing here, into, into a lot of links as a follow-up. 
and especially at a link follow-up we've been seeing a lot recently in professional play we've seen Serral play this a couple of times and when Serral plays an all-in you know it's gonna get copied a lot so here we have Dark Sun and the next injects basically decide what's going to happen what will happen with these larvae that is a, an interesting question seems like Dark Sun doesn't quite have an answer to that question yet either as he is saving up okay it's going to be links now when you open up like this a roach into link push your goal is to attack as fast as possible basically you want to to kill your opponent if not kill at least extremely limit them for the future take out depots in the main base take out like as many workers as you can basically kill them but keep them alive like this is this is an all-in i really would call this an all-in this is not a pressure anymore so it's important that you also treat this as an all-in He's taking it's not taking too much time he's going for the depots i wouldn't mind completely ignoring those and just straight up running for the ramp here uh, yeah yeah Th this is what i'm kind of this is what i was kind of afraid of and this is what's happening here exactly i'm going for the depots first and even going down here for the okay this is completely wrong now i'm going to explain this in uh that the goals are incorrect the execution by itself isn't necessarily incorrect um if you were doing something else it's just a mismatch between the strategy you're picking and the execution of the strategy okay now imagine we have as a goal that we want to to buy a house and our co-workers ask us out for lunch so the co-workers ask you out for lunch you go no sorry i'm saving money because i'm planning on buying a house it's a, a fair excuse, co-workers are like, yeah, whatever, sounds good. Then the next day you show up to work in a completely new car. And your co-workers are like, hey, what the hell is that? That makes no sense whatsoever. I thought you were saving for a house. And buying a car by itself is not necessarily a bad thing. The problem is just that you had the intention of buying a house. And when you buy a car, it's a lot of money that you're wasting there. It's the exact same here with this Roach, Roach, Roach Ravager Link Bust. Basically, your goal here is to kill your opponent but you're treating this as if a limited pressure killing workers is going to be enough if you wanted to just kill workers kill a couple of depots and then piss off into a macro game you could have gone without all of these links you built 30 links that is 15 drones 15 drones you could have had extra right now and you would have had the exact same result i guarantee you with just the initial three roaches and five ravagers as you would have had now these SCVs you're only getting because your opponent ran down to this area rather than pulling up into the main base as well. So you're wasting a lot of time for no real reason. You would have gotten these SCVs as well with just the roaches. That's a mistake out of your opponent, but he would have made that mistake in both scenarios most likely. So basically what you've done here right now is um, you haven't killed your opponent, which is the goal with this build. Uh, and you're, you're not even going to be far ahead economically because you build all of those links so basically you, you know as a kid sometimes you have to you have to like match the word with like the picture you just saw the word boat and you matched it with the picture of a car and it, it is incorrect it's just completely incorrect by themselves like a boat a boat and a car are completely fine to do but you do need to mix it with the correct the strategy and the execution need to be mixed properly now what is completely incorrect here are these roaches if you want to reinforce a push that is happening already at this moment you're not going to be building roaches why not because roaches are freaking slow they take a very long time to get across the map and by the time they arrive the push most likely is already going to be over this would be like saying that you're going to buy a house and then you're going to your local louis vuitton store and buying an entire outfit of louis vuitton there's not a single point to that. Nowhere in the world has anyone benefited from buying a Louis Vuitton I uh, outfit. The only one benefiting there is, is Mr. Vuitton. I and does he really need more cash? No, he doesn't. So stop buying Louis Vuitton outfits and stop building roaches to reinforce a roach ravager link push. See, your push is getting pushed back right now, which makes sense. Or you would have killed your opponent already. But these roaches are going to arrive after the fact. And they always would have arrived after that. Look at this. Brilliant. Everyone died. You can maybe lick up their blood or something like that. Brilliant stuff. We're actually in a bit of trouble right now, despite the, the, the start of this push going extremely well. And this really was my issue with it. This really is my issue with it. Basically, 
you should have been at like 55 workers at this point. If you would have been at 55 workers, maybe even more, look, you, you keep building this. You could have been at 55 workers with these 20 links already out as well. And then at home you could have had queens. So you still would have been capable of defending the counterattack. And you would have been up so far that it, even if your opponent had freaking three orbital commands with 12 mules saved up, it wouldn't have mattered at this point. At this point, it wouldn't have mattered. You would have been so far ahead. But instead of that, you didn't kill your opponent's army. You, you didn't kill enough eco. I still believe you're kind of... Uh, yeah, I still believe actually you're ahead. But you could have been so far ahead that the game would have been literally unlosable. At this point, well, the game still is literally unlosable, but it would have been literally, literally unlosable. We already have the insider information that you do end up losing this game. And that shows me that despite your good early games and your understanding of early game kind of strategies and tactics, you probably have poorer macro skills. So kind of seeing that 600 minerals floating. Okay, nine drones at the same time. Would not mind seeing a couple of queens being added right now for creep spread, but also for general, you know, adding into the defense. Uh, both transfusers and uh, general tanking power queens are absolutely fantastic there's a reason why it's the unit that every single pro zerk in the world builds a crap on zergs disagree with each other all the time the koreans with the europeans the europeans with the american well most zergs or most people in general disagree with the americans when it comes to starcraft 2 theory but they all agree on one thing and that is that the queen is a very good unit in most most games 99 percent of the games you want to get more than three queens if you have three hatcheries i actually believe that if the terran knew how to micro here that you would die which is insane after how this early game went <sighs> not a spire not a spire i'm going to explain why as well I'm a little bit disappointed here, okay? You scouted, not even with this overlord, I think, but just with your, your all-in, that there was five wrecks and no third base, okay? You know that you're up in upgrades. You know that you're up in eco. You know that you're being all-in. The Mutalisk is a unit that has a, a specialty, specialty unit, I would call it. It's good at harassing, and it is good at defending small drops. Your opponent is two base all in you. You're not going to be harassing your opponent with, what, 10 mutas? It's going to be fairly easy for your opponent to defend because he only has two bases. One of the reasons why um, mutas are so nice to have is because the defense needs to happen at multiple places. Despite, So, so uh, let me explain this properly. Imagine there's 10 mutas and you're playing against a one base Terran. In order for the Terran to be safe, to have his economy safe, he'll need to build one turret. Now, if there's 10 mutalisk and there's six bases, the Terran will need to build six turrets at every single base, one turret. That means that the same investment from the Zerg gets a way bigger response out of the Terran. Also, Terran will probably need to keep units in different positions if you have six bases. If you have two bases, you put like maybe a medevac here or you put five or six marines here with half a medevac, you're going to be just fine. You can protect all your infrastructure, all your SCVs are safe. So this is why often against two base all -ins, you don't want them. Another reason why you don't want them is because with two base all -ins, your defense tends to be quite tight. Mutalisk is one of the most expensive Zerg units that has no fighting power whatsoever. They're garbage in a straight up engagement. They're great at what Mutas do. Mutas is a fantastic unit, don't get me wrong. People lose to Mutas all the time. But the problem is that in a direct fight, they're just not as brilliant. And uh, So they're not good in a direct fight. They're mainly for harassment. And your opponent shouldn't be doing drops. Your opponent is doing drops, but that's a mistake. Just because your opponent is making a mistake with how he decides to use his units doesn't mean that the Spire here is a good decision. Even if you're going to get all the use out of it in this game, that doesn't mean that the Spire was a good decision. Staying on pure Ling Bane, adding more hatcheries to uh, make sure that you can spend your money, or even going Ling Bane Hydra, I wouldn't have minded as much, or getting a couple of Ravagers in there, because you already have the Roach Warren after all, I wouldn't even have minded as much. But defending a two base all in with Mutas, you'll hear every single Zerg say this as well. They'll say two things. One is that Queen's freaking free, are freaking brilliant against everything. And two, that Mutalists suck against two base all-ins. These are just these are actual objective facts at this point. Just because your opponent is dropping, which is a mistake, doesn't make your response any better. Your response is still as bad 
your opponent just also has a bad response to your response. Do like this drop, actually. Can do like this drop. You also floating 1100 minerals. Still two little queens as well, only two. Really should start adding some queens. Also a great way, by the way, to spend money. Queens do not require larva to be built. <laughs> there we go. 20 seconds. This is like, uh, you know, in Hollywood, the Wild West movies, you have the jewel at like noon or something like that. So they, they meet in like the main street, waiting, waiting until the, the bell chimes 12. You're just standing there can't draw their gun before this was a similar situation except no one heard the bell and currently it's 3 p.m they were just standing there <laughs> one man of fact flying in here just chilling well the other guy had his mute house just idling right next to it i think that legit took like 25 seconds or so he's awesome he's a wonderful base trade what was i gonna say i was talking about queens yeah queens don't cause larva um, so they're not really impeding your ability to produce other units. They're great when you need to spend money and you want to defend something. I don't... I don't mind this run by completely. But there, there's one thing that is wrong here. And I'm actually going to go back into the game a little bit for that. Okay? So these run bys with Ling Bane Muda are quite common against things like... If you're playing against an Adrax out of a Terran. In that, in that case, Terran usually has a third base. You'll see like a massive run by with Muta Ling. The Mutas make it easy to break uh, basically anything. And the Lings, you know, they, they also clear absolutely everything. So together they work well. However, whenever you see this, Zergs always leave a bunch of Banelings at home. And the reason for this is, is when you have Banelings on creep, no matter the amount of Banelings, as long as you have like 10 or 12 Banelings, it is difficult for Terran to move forward quickly in the base trade. This allows the Zerg to quickly take out the opponent's base, um, or at least the active mining bases, and then return back home with this while the Banelings are stalling. If you don't have any Banelings for stalling, then this base race isn't actually that good. Like, it's nice that you kill a base. You, you, don't get me wrong. You're still up three bases, even after losing your fort. Or, well, you're still two, up two bases, even after losing your fort. Good lord, elementary school math is difficult. Um, <laughs> but the, the problem is, is that your opponent can actually get a decent position. It's also not a brilliant start of a fight, I have to admit. Is this the... Is this the lag? This has to be the lag moment. Now... I had my doubts when I read it in the in the imbalance complaint form that this was actual lag. But, you know, let's just take a look at this at first person. Let's take a look at the, the APM that's happening during this. I'm going to slow down the game a little bit as well. So we see moving of the camera. APM at 300. 400. It's hard to say. If he lagged or if he just didn't micro his units. I mean, he was moving the camera, which I think if you're lagging, I'm not sure if that's even possible. I want to see this again. I don't want to play a judge here, but... I think there was some camera movement during this, no? If you lag, I don't think you can move your camera. Was there camera? Oh, no camera movement here. Now he starts moving again. Fifty-fifty. It might have been lag, actually. It might have actually been lag. I don't want to say no, because it might have been true. Now, at this point, the game feels fairly over. In favor of our Terran player, I would say. It's 27 workers against 12. <laughs> he started the hive? When did he start the hive? Oh my god, I can't believe we're going to see this fight for a third time. I want to see the decision making behind this. Oh my god, I think I missed this the first two times. So what does he scout? He supply blocked. He's like, ah, I just lost my fourth base. My opponent has no natural left. The thing that I really need is adrenal glands in three and a half minutes from now. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Maybe he just saw that the queen just popped and was like, ah, oh, let me use this hatchery. 
for something at least. This was the worst fight I've seen in my life. It might actually have been lag. Even if it wasn't lag though, the decision to fight there still was a bad one. He should have kind of waited it out, gotten way more bane links. Should not have gotten the high. <laughs> Why is the Muta being produced right now? <laughs> a Muta can't even beat a single Marine. I think if you fight the m Marine against the Muta list and the Marine is being healed, the Marine actually gains HP. Like the Muta has negative damage output. It's actually, it was initially designed as a support unit where the Muta bounce would just heal your own units. This is one of my many theories I have. Like the Mutalist, Mutalist DPS is pathetic. I can't believe this defense works out because the Terran forgot the micro there. Holy crap, this is an insane game. <laughs> 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 Actually, I can't believe we went for a hive. 27 workers. Down 50 supply or something in army supply. The response was to get a hive, rather than getting 5 extra banelings. Love to see it. Anyway, is this still a playable position right now? Is a question that you could ask. I think the answer might be yes. Yeah, I uh, might be playable. You have 32 workers. You're mining off of a base and a half. Your opponent is mining just off of one day. I guess with the orbital flying over, it could be pretty rough. I, I'm not understanding of this layer whatsoever. Like, is plus two carapace important? Yes. Is it important enough to invest the money to get a layer right now when it's obvious that you, you're going to need it in the moment? Your opponent is never going to get 2-2 two, two anyway. So, despite upgrades being important, I don't think it's the most important. He got carapace flyer first as well. He's really keen on the upgrades. Last week we had the guy without the upgrades. This week we have a guy who's really keen on the upgrades. Not sure what I prefer. I feel like in this situation, surely getting no upgrades would be a lot better. So it takes the natural. Usually I'd say take a different base that has more mineral patches maybe, but... I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to be too critical of that. This army goes across the map. Yeah, eight Muras. You much rather would have just more Banelings at this point, right? It's just simply better. Especially if you're not going to be using them for any type of harassment. Which, quite frankly, could have been used. There's no turrets whatsoever. Banelings. Oh! Was that also lag? Oh my god. Look at these Banelings. I feel like the Banelings were being A-moved. And the Banelings had the right idea here. Look at this. Look at this fight. Just look at this fight. They're going... They're aiming... Aiming for the, the Marines. And then they dodge the Marines. To go straight into the unit. That can tank them. I don't even understand. This is like just driving into a wall for fun. Why would you do that? Yeah, your, my, your car is, is totaled. Congratulations. At least the wall is also uh, damaged. It's like, yeah. Two Marauders went down. He lost like all of your Banelings. And then he tried to fight with the eight Mutas into the Marines. Like, huh. 200 resources against a 50 mineral unit? Still not quite the trade that I thought it was. I mean, the mules did, did decent here, I guess. I, I guess we saw the five mules fall earlier. I guess those are the five mules he was talking about. It is an odd thing to complain about in this game, though, isn't it? I would, if I were a Zerg and I wanted something to complain, I would talk about the tanking damage of the Marauder or the inability of a 200 research unit called the Mutalist to kill a single Marine which is only 50 minerals like I'd have a lot of things to complain about but I don't think I dare touching the Mutas it's not like income was the issue here was it <laughs> this is this is the funny thing is is that the resource loss wise this wouldn't even be super uncommon to see right you see okay maybe 10k at this point is kind of uncommon but seeing a terran very far ahead isn't that uncommon the funny thing is is that the terran has been playing like the, the terran built like five mines this entire game legit five no there's still six alive so he built 11 but he probably he lost five mines he had a terrible army the entire time any amount of banings would have killed him because the terran control wasn't that great that's often the case in diamond it's not to to judge mr Mr. E. It's not Marie, it's Mr. E. Not to judge Mr. E. It's just, like, this is one of the things. The Baneling is just a better unit at lower levels because the micro against the Baneling is harder than microing with the Baneling. All you need to do is try and not aim at the Marauders. And as a Terran, you actually need to split, move your Marines back, all of that good jazz. 
Holy crap, these are some bad fights. It's actually quite impressive. And one of the main reasons is probably because you lost so many Mudas, right? Yeah. Built 22 Muda lists. Playing against a, a 17 minute 2 base all in. And this game is absolutely over. Why are we still watching this? This is some heavy copium. Dark Song couldn't win the game. Up uh, 45 workers. Up 2 bases. Up an upgrade as well. And then believes that he could still hold 26 supply against 99. I mean, th this... This is the type of game where I just don't quite understand why they pick what they pick to complain on. The comeback potential is just too high. Well, it, 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 this is something you can say if Terran actually has to make a comeback. You kind of handed him the comeback. A, by building the Muta disc against the two base all in, and B, by taking some of the absolute worst fights that I've seen in my life. You even already say, like, my potato computer lagged, all my mutas fly into mines and died. Well, not just your mutas, also your links and your banes and the rest of your army. But do you do, do you think it's fair that if someone doesn't micro their army for five or six seconds, that they would lose the fight and that the opponent is capable of making a comeback? I think that is fair. I mean, the game shouldn't be balanced about, like, around your crappy computer it's like, oh, majority of Zerg players have worse computers than Protoss. Well, in that case, we make Zerg easier to micro in case they lag. How does it make any sense? Like, it's nice to have an excuse for why you lost your entire army for free for yourself. Maybe it helps you sleep better at night. That is completely okay. But I, I think it is completely normal that if you don't control your army for that long, that yeah, you're going to lose absolutely everything. Despite that if you would have microed a little bit there, would have had 10 more bailings, probably would have absolutely destroyed that fight. Um, I don't even think the mules had much of an impact. The moment the mules actually got into play, I think you had already lost the game. Even without mules, I'm pretty sure that the Terran still would have won. Like the final fight was 96 supply against 25. I don't think that would have been vastly different if he would have had five less mules there. He might have had, what, like uh, 20, 30 less supply or so. He still would have died because all you had were like four mules and half a baneling. Mules were not the issue, my friend. Your terrible control, your lack of decision making, your bad execution with the early game push, which already should have either won you the game, put you so far ahead that it would have been unlosable. These were all the issue. Mules stackable, what do you call it? Stacking mules is not imbalanced. You, my friend, just freaking suck. That's how it is. All right, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you did enjoy this episode of Iodis. Is it in or do I suck? Uh, if you did, don't forget to like, but subscribe to the channel. Please, I'll see you next time for a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and bye, bye.